Hey, man. Watch out! It's a woodpecker from space! Alright guys, today is going to be the start of a new sculpture. This is a armature that I built really quickly to support some uh, clay up here. There's many ways of building it, but if you do this, it's basically just a series of these wires that you can kind of loop around and it will support your clay. So that means that the neck is going to be here and the reason you want to have this type of armature is that you can move it around. This is my model, and uh, as far as right now, I'm just gonna work with the head, and I'm not gonna worry too much about this, but what you're gonna need first is a wire tool like this. Let's make a one inch cut like this, and we're simply just going to wrap it around our armature. And we're gonna be kind of careful, but we also just kind of want to join it at the end. So if I turn it this way, you see that the bag is kind of pinching. So I'm just gonna push it in and I'm just gonna join the, the clay. So I'm gonna take another slice of the clay and we're gonna wrap it around the bottom part. Just kind of pushing it down. Usually I do like to use tools more but in this beginning stage, I just want to push this all the way down with my hands. It doesn't look like much. This is clearly the profile. You can see the neck. This will come to the surface. So this is gonna be the lower back. Sculpture to be ready to fire in a kiln, you have to hollow it out. So you can't leave it full of clay. It can't be this dense because if it's this dense, it'll just break in the kiln. So one of the things you can do is kind of like establish where the chin is going to be. And once you establish that, you can kind of just make a sharp point. You can draw where things are going to be. So the chin, we're going to build the head this way and the back of the head, it's going to come out quite a bit. This, you're going to have to push it in quite a bit and move it to the top because a lot of this clay is going to be falling down so it's better to add more at the top. What I like about this tool is that you can push it in quite a bit and it creates a nice flat edge a lot more to the neck. cool tools you can use is this aluminum scraper. If I put, let's say, I wanted to make the skull wider, I could put my clay down, take this tool, because it bends. You see, like, it's just kind of very flexible. You can make one out of a Coke can. The middle right here is going to be where my eyes are going to be, where the eyes are. And remember, we're still kind of mimicking a skull. But also, my model has got a very indigenous look to her. She has very high cheekbones, so we can start adding those shapes. And also, in my reference photo, she is smiling, so that means that the muscles of the face are kind of brought up a little bit. And using my tool, this is actually a pretty decent tool for this. So supercellulary arch, 
is right about here. We can start using our tool to carefully go around and model some of these bones. And actually this bar is going to be kind of coming up a bit. So we're going to push up this ridge and there's a very distinct ridge between the front of the skull and the side of the skull. Her face needs to be just a little bit wider. She's got wider masseter, which is her, her jaw here. What they do is like if it's a female model, they'll simply try to create it like female right away. But all of these le little details are going to be coming towards the end. We just want to shape it, kind of figure out where things are. And all of this, it's clay, so you can move it around. So what I'm doing now is just trying to work the major shapes without doing a lot of um, details. Just creating the structure. Also keep in mind that lighting is important even for sculpture, but you can't re rely on the lighting in the beginning. Just think more in terms of anatomy. It's more important to uh, know anatomy than, than lighting. You know, when you're a painter, you rely a lot on the lighting because that's what reveals the shapes. But in sculpture, anatomy under, underneath the skin reveals the shape. So just keep that in mind. Up here on hers, it's really pronounced. It's the mental eminences. And there's usually two. And of course, her head actually kind of goes like this. But on this, there is a little bit more. And what I do is I take just a little bit of clay and I start putting it. Usually if I put hmm, a little bit too much, it doesn't really matter because I am missing quite a bit in the, the front of the skull. A little bit here in the mental eminence, and then I'll take this tool and kind of just push it. That is what the whole modeling thing is. This is a technique I learned actually kind of recently. Most of the time I did a lot of scraping, and I think scraping in a way is a little bit more difficult. So. Here, look above most people's eyes and you'll see a bone. You can feel it on your own skull. And that's the superciliary arch. So generally, Caucasian models, Caucasian female models will not have this very pronounced. And it's always like a, a play. Actually, if you look at um, uh, African models, male, this is a very pronounced bone. And usually with Caucasians, you don't have this bone as pronounced. It's kind of interesting when you see the, the differences between races because, you know, that is very distinct. So this is the eyebrow ridge or the superciliary arch. I like to build it up slowly. And we're not looking for a likeness. We're just looking to kind of build the structure. So this is the, the bone surrounding the eye the orbicularis oculi, or the, um, the eye ridge, the bone, kind of comes out. And then, if you pay attention, the temple actually comes out a little bit more. So we're gonna add a little bit more clay to the side here. Very thin, she's got a very thin face. Her jawline is surprisingly thick. So I'm adding clay here to kind of create a little bit more fullness. And also in the temple, and also, in the sides, we're gonna have to add a whole lot more clay. And this is just from like looking at the reference. So you tool and just try to smooth it and push it in at the same time. Remember our masseter, which is this right here, we're gonna have to round it and make it a little bit bigger. And this is the usual way I do it. Like I'll add the clay and then I'll take my modeling tool and try to create the roundness and push it in at the same time. But you can see that I'm kind of curving my modeling tool. I try and draw a line around the nose, straight with my eyes, you know, like this. And I figure that my cheekbone here is actually like right about here. So very wide cheekbones. 
So I add the section I want here, and then I'll take my tool and blend that into the existing clay and shape everything else around it. And I keep moving it. You should always be moving your clay, moving your stand. This is why it's important to have a modeling stand that's uh, very easy to move around. If you only have a table, you can get a Lazy Susan uh, caster, and it's a very cheap alternative to a uh, modeling, uh, a sculpture modeling stand. Keep in mind that when you are looking at the cheek, how far does the cheek come out as compared to the zygomatic uh, arch and bone? And on her, this zygomatic arch is wider than the, her jaw. So right now, it's kind of like a struggle. It's just um, we're trying to figure things out and we're trying to figure out where things are going to be added. So if I am going to make a decent sculpture. Sculpture is all about drawing in 3D. What I'm going to do now is, this section is horribly thin. It needs to kind of come up. Part needs to kind of come up. More. So right up there. And then I'll take my scraping tool and I'll blend it in. towards the back of the year, the zygomatic process of the year. That there is a little bit of thing that we need to kind of keep in mind. So we, that's her cheekbone right here. And then there's her hairline. And I think we have to bring that ear pretty far back and it don't do a full ear. What I like to do is just kind of indicate where things are. And if you use your tool, she is kind of like leaning up a bit. Best thing about this clay, you can kind of move it. And take a line from your ear and see where it goes. Since she's looking up, I'm actually seeing that their ear is further down. Generally, the top of the ear is at the eyebrow ridge on hers it is not but all of this could change it doesn't really matter so usually the bottom of the ear is going to be at the bottom of her nose she's looking up so this is going to be right about here so so but don't worry about details but a lot of artists actually use the ear hole for measurements for reference for a life-size sculpture they'll take measurements from here to here here to here here to here and that will help take some really good measurements but i don't have the model in front of me it's a little bit harder to do it when you don't have the model it push out the ear remember the ear doesn't really attach from this rear side to the skull so now at this side we could start giving her a little bit of an expression. I think I'm gonna wait on it. You can take your hands and kind of just put them side by side and kind of feel the symmetry because you don't want to get carried away on one side and then neglect the other. I like to keep things, if I do the ear on one side, I'm gonna do the ear on the other side. Even if I don't finish for today, it's always good to kind of just have the two things symmetrical. You guys can tell we are on our way even though it doesn't look like the model yet. Hopefully we can change this. Hopefully we're gonna pull this off. You know there's a lot of things that you could do in portrait sculpture. There's very different ways and if you listen to various artists they'll give you a different way. But there's really no right way and for me it's always like a learning process. I can't ever it takes me a really long time to really understand things. So, um, but this is what I got so far. The thing that you should not rush is that you got to build an armature, a good armature. I've made mistakes before where I made an armature and it just kind of, you're always fighting the armature. It's always sinking. 
So this armature, even though it's not perfect, it will get you to the sculpture pretty quickly. It's just four wires, it looks like an egg beater, and then you just wrap it around a flange. You can use a two by four to bring it up. And this could be for a bust, or you can just leave it for the head. You can see the head is slightly undersized, and I don't really like full-size sculptures too much. And the reason is they just require so much more clay, so much more time, and I kind of like to do sculptures kind of fast. So that's why I kind of like the undersized stuff. Make sure you have very good reference. I took these photos myself of the model. She's got a very unique look that I really like, so hopefully we can get this done. But this is part one. This is the first uh, session, and I'll be hopefully doing this a little bit more. If you like what you see, just post up in the comments below and let me know if um, I'm going the right way, if I'm making any mistakes, I'll gladly try and take care of those. But uh, I really appreciate you guys watching and I'm going to see you in the next video of this series where we're going to start adding the mass of the skull and build it out. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.